January 1st, you started a tutoring business called Brian Works and charged $30 an hour for tutoring. The following are your transactions for 2017. On January 1st, you purchased a computer from Apple for $1,500 cash. So we'll just start with that. We'll, the, the adjusting will refer to the next part. So what was our transaction? Which accounts are being affected here? Cash, cash computer. We'll call it computer equipment. Is cash going up or down? No. Computer equipment? So we can, they're both assets. So that's January 1st. On February 1st, you paid 1200 cash for one year of insurance. So which accounts are being affected? So have you used the insurance? It's for one month, so we it's, it's for one year. Prepaid, 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 right? Because if you're paying ahead and you haven't received the benefit from it, it's an asset. And as it's used, it becomes an expense. So your prepaid insurance is going up or down? Up. Up. Cash? Down. And what type of account is prepaid insurance? Debit. It's an asset, debit. so it's debit. debit. On March 1st, you purchased supplies, including paper, pens, and notebooks for $6.50 cash at Staples. So what accounts are being affected? Yeah, office supplies or supplies. And? On November 1st, Charlotte, a student pays cash for eight hours of tutoring per month. On November 2017, December 2017, and January 2018. So Charlotte's spending eight hours times 30, right? Because it says 30 at the top here. Which is 240 per month, and she bought three, three months. So 720. Which accounts are being affected? Cash and have you done the work yet? Yes. You've you've completed on November first. You've completed the three months of tutoring already. No, you haven't. So what account would it be? Unearned revenue. What type of account is unearned revenue? Okay, is it going up or down?
Oops, sorry, cash is going out. So it asks us to do A to D, initial journal entries, which we've done. So let's go back through now and do our adjusting entries on December 31st, 2017. So on January 1st, we purchased the Apple computer for $1,500. Now in your brights, or in your smart reading, you should have looked or read about depreciation, but I'll give you a rundown. What we're gonna learn in accounting 150 is straight line depreciation. What we learn in accounting 151 is the other methods. There's a few other ones we use. But for this class, it's really straightforward. So I'll give you the formula, and you're gonna have to memorize it immediately. It is purchase price minus residual value yeah, estimated life and then we can multiply by months if needed. So, let's go through it for A here. How much did we purchase the computer for? 1500 And how much will it be worth after it's finished? Zero. Giving to sisters a gift. Minus zero. And how long will it last? Three years. Three years. So, we get 500 per year. Now, we're going to depreciate it based on the year, so we can use this months. So how many months will it be used for in 2017? Yeah, the full year, right? We purchased on January 1st. So we will depreciate $500. Now, the accounts for depreciation. So all of our... Adjusting entries are going to be at the end of the period, December 31st. Yes, we use depreciation, expense, and this will be the exact same in your midterm. And we're going to credit what's called a contra asset account. It's depreciation, uh, pardon me. Accumulated depreciation, and then we have to put a comma. We need to uh, associate it with an account, and in this case, it would be computer equipment because that's what we debited when we first had our initial transaction. And it will be for 500 That is our first adjusting entry. On February 1st, we paid 1,200 cash for one year of insurance coverage. And so on December 31st, how much insurance coverage do we have remaining? We have 11 months remaining? Or have we used 11 months? 
what, what is our monthly expense for insurance? 1200 divided by 12, 100. So after 11 months of use, how much should be an expense, should be expensed? 1100, how much should be remaining? 100. So to do that, we need to debit our insurance expense. So we're converting our insurance, our prepaid insurance, which is an asset, to our insurance expense at the end of the year. So now, when our end user looks at the financial statements, they're only going to see a $100 balance for prepaid insurance, and then the rest will be converted to an expense. Because after 11 months, we don't have, we've used it, exactly. On March 1st, you purchased supplies including papers, pens, and notebooks for $650 cash at Staples Canada. And at the end of the year, you have $230 of supplies left. So this is where, when you see, when you, when you see a balance remaining, this is where using your T-chart that we did in class one can be really helpful. So we're going to just build a little one on the side here. So we've got supplies. This is debit, this is credit, oops, this is credit. Now, initially we debited 650. And now they're saying we have 230 remaining. So what do we do need to do to take it from 650 to 230? Yeah, we're gonna have to credit 420 to supplies. So we know what our credit is. What will our debit be? I'll give you a bit of a hint. When we depreciate, when we when we did our depreciation, what was the first one? Depreciation expense. When we looked at our insurance and converted it, it turned into insurance expense. So when we are adjusting our supplies, what, what supplies, it, expense. supplies expense. There's like a 90% chance that if you're working with expenses, just add expense to the initial, initial account and you'll get it right. If you're really stuck. I'm giving you the account names on your midterm. So you're not gonna have to guess at it, but you will have to know, right? So we took 720 from Charlotte on November 1st for three months of tutoring, three equal months of tutoring. On December 31st, how much do we have remaining? How many months left are there? One. So what do we need to do with the other two months that we've completed? It's now revenue. No, it's not revenue. So, so our unearned revenue, which we've initially recorded it as, will go up or down? Down. Right, because we've we've completed two out of our three months obligation to them. So we have two thirds less liability. And what will go up? Revenue. 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 So we can go ahead and do that. So what is two thirds of seven twenty? Four eighty.
You tutor George for four hours. You tutor George for four hours in December. However, George was away for Christmas and has promised to pay you in January. So which accounts are affected? Yep. And which? What? You've done the work, right? So if you've done the work, it's not unearned. So on December 31st, you make sure you include your revenue. Why are we making sure we do this, not when we get paid? Why do we make sure we entered on December 31st, not when we get paid? Not the matching principle, but close. Matching is for expenses. What is for revenue? Revenue, revenue recognition principle, exactly. It's one twenty because thirty dollars an hour for four hours. On December thirty first, twenty seventeen, Telus Communication sends your business cell phone. Uh, bill for $65. The bill is due January 15th. So what do we do? What accounts are being affected? There we have it. We had four initial transactions and we had four initial transactions and we had six adjustments.